Welcome to the United Way Difference, a program that discusses Oshkosh community needs and how local nonprofit agencies are supporting people in our area. The United Way's focus in the areas of income, education, health, and volunteerism helps to build a stronger, more caring, and compassionate community. The United Way Difference is brought to you by the Oshkosh Area United Way. Welcome to the United Way Difference. Today my guest is Lisa Smith. Lisa is a certified manager um, of the 211, United Way 211 uh, service that we provide in, in the 10 county area, Lisa, right? That's correct. Well, welcome to the program. Well, thank you so much for inviting me, Sue. I, I mean, we've known each other for how long? And <laughs> we've just never had you on the program, so I really appreciated it. I appreciate you coming. Uh, 211, I think, is one of the best kept secrets um, in the United Way family of the programs that we fund. So we're here to talk to Lisa and hopefully inform you about how you can use 211 in your daily lives. So, Lisa, what is 211? Well, 211 is actually um, it's a dialing code that folks can use to. Um, to access health and human service information. Okay, that's going to come up on the screen in just a second. Okay, and also, it's, so it's a free service. It's available 24-7. Um, you do speak to a live person. There isn't any um, voicemail or anything like that. Well, now, you might get a voicemail if you're busy. Actually, and it just that's say not hold. true. It'll, you may get um, just a script that would tell you to hold, or okay. you can also receive an automatic call back from okay. one of our agents. But all of our agents are trained and certified in information and referral. And um, so again, 24-7 live, those folks also are able to connect with um, interpreters if necessary, so we can basically handle any language that you know, folk, people would call in with. Okay, so, so what is 211? And this slide's got a lot of information on there for you, but um, tell me a little bit more. Get into the kind of the nuts and bolts of it. You talked about it being multi multilingual and 24-7. Sure. Um, but why do we have 211? Well, 211 was established way back in the late 90s, federally. So federally, the uh, 211 was established as a dialing code for people to access health, human service, and information on local disaster. Okay. Um, it prevents a lot of misdirected calls going to a 911 service or, um, you know, s people calling the police departments for things that are non-emergency. Okay. But again, we also provide all of the resources and information on health and human services. So give me an example of, um, of how you might coordinate this in the community. So while 201 is coordinated through, we have a database of all of the resources that's curated annually. So we keep that database updated every year. Oh, curated. Yes, curated. Um, and that's a huge important part of 211. But how, um, do, how does the data get in there? The data comes from the agency, so okay. an agency updates their information with us annually. Okay. Um, so it's really what they want callers to know about their services, can and they, that's important. Can they uh, update it more than annual? Absolutely. You can update your information with us anytime that there's a change, and of course for some agencies, changes that are, are going to affect how they provide service are very important to communicate with us. Okay. And what kinds of programs can, there, like if there's a business who wants to be in 211, can they be in 211? We do have um, inclusion criteria that's basically a, a nationally established and a statewide established type of criteria. Um, businesses that are um, for profit can be included if they're providing a service that no one else is providing or that it's free to the general public to use. Okay, now I know that our United Way partners with your United Way in order to provide this, but how many other partners do you have that are just part of the United Way family? And then who else did you say you have as partners? Well, our partners include all of the United Ways in our 10 county service delivery area. So, so that, they, would that would include Manitowoc, Fond du Lac, New London, Ripon, and Sheboygan. And uh, you and me. And of course, Oshkosh. And Fox City. Yes. And okay. we also do um, partner with uh, Green Lake um, Community Fund, and it's called the United Fund there. Okay. So, th because Green Lake is one of our counties. Okay. So, um, I know a little bit about this because, of course, we're, we're a partner with you, but can you tell our audience um, beyond giving people good information, how can you support those United Ways and other organizations that you partner with with information? Well, the United Way organizations, we re what we really try to do is provide critical data on emerging issues in your community. So if, you, if you're working on some community impact initiatives, things that are very important to your community, our data is real time and can really 
try to drive some of the initiatives and some of the work that's going to go on in those local communities. Okay, so I, and people ask me this question all the time. Why is United Way doing this? Well, United Way actually has been a partner of 211 since it was established as a dialing code. So what we've tried to do um, locally and statewide and nationally is make sure that we're the boots on the ground service for local United Ways and also for the United Way worldwide. They really do see us as um, a way to achieve goal. The pillar of they are a pillar of support for 211. Okay, and so then how widespread is 211? Well, 211 covers most most states in the in the country. There are a couple of states that we now see um, are, that are starting to get on board with 211, and that would be Illinois and Arkansas. Illinois wasn't on board. No. Oh my goodness. Unfortunately, they didn't have an established 211 system. Oh. Okay. They're working on that currently. Um, so you know, so basically at this point, we're about 92.6 percent of coverage in the in the country. So wherever you go, typically if you dial 211, you will be routed to someone just like our call center that can pick up the phone, a, a real person who can help you with health human service and you know, even questions or just looking for a, a phone number locally. Sometimes it's really hard for our older residents to find phone numbers to government uh, agencies, mm -hmm. things like that. And it's a pretty easy number. I mean, we're all familiar with, um, you know, of course, 911 for you know, emergency. And then we have 511, is that for roads? 511 is roads in, in the state of Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. then um, 411, of course, is directory assistance. Correct. Um, and 811? 811 is Digger's Hotline. So Good people want to know. know that one, yes. Yeah. Especially um, if you're a gardener. Absolutely. <laughs> but 411, I think, is a great, it's a great thing if you need to find a personal phone number or a business phone number. But again, in some areas of, especially rural areas of our state, people aren't able to dial 411 or there may have a, they may be charged for that service. So. Okay. We, while we can't provide that type of information, we don't provide information on individual phone okay. numbers. We certainly are happy to help people if they're unable to find a number. Okay. Now, um, 211, can you dial it from a cell phone? Yes, absolutely. Your cell phone is typically linked to a community or an area in the state of Wisconsin, and then that, your call would be routed to that, that area code. Okay. But now, if I'm in Illinois and I need 211, or no, let, no, I'll go to a community, let's go to Minnesota, okay. and I need 211, because I know they have 211. Where is it going to link me? Well, it depends on where your cell phone is linked. So if your cell phone is linked to the Fox Cities, you would still come back to us. Okay, so could you give me information about what's going on in Minnesota? Well, we would route you or actually transfer you to the local call center there, wherever you are in Minnesota. So it's still one call, I it's would It's still make. one call, and we warm transfer those calls over to the appropriate call center. Okay, so how does um, 211 Wisconsin is involved with this? Um, you know, our United Way, our, our kind of, um, our statewide organization is involved in 211. So how did that all happen? Well, a few years ago, the um, United Way Wisconsin did take over leadership of the 211 system in Wisconsin. That, it wasn't always like that. And so our uh, your United Way of Wisconsin provides the executive director leadership. Um, they coordinate all of the seven call centers in Wisconsin. Um, and they ensure that there's statewide coverage. So they do provide a lot of leadership and it's, it's a really good partnership um, for all of us because we have that strong statewide presence. And you talked about the um, seven call centers. And so this map will illustrate um, where the call centers are located. So um, I'm trying to use my cursor and that's not gonna work on there. <laughs> but um, in the lower corner, that would be Impact out of Milwaukee? Correct. Impact out of Milwaukee covers actually the purple and the blue. The purple and the blue, yes. okay. Great Rivers is in the yellow. Now Great Rivers 211 and Impact 211 are 24-7 call centers. Okay. So all the call centers in Wisconsin are required to uh, work with either Great Rivers or Impact for those after hours and weekend calls. Okay, because we're not going to find you there That's on a correct. Friday night That's at correct. 4 in the morning right. or Saturday morning. At so our morning. call okay. centers are staffed between 8 and 5 and then we um, certainly have great partnership with, we have a partnership with Impact who covers those after hours. But how do they calls. know what's going on, what, what information is in the Fox Cities? I mean, am I going to get Milwaukee information or? Absolutely not. So the statewide database that we are currently migrating to and have been using for quite some time um, includes all of the information for our local areas. So when Impact is taking calls for 211, uh, United Way 211, they, they access our information and they use our forms in the database. So they're very familiar with what's what's going on in our community. They've been doing it for almost 10 years. So, so, so truly, anywhere in Wisconsin, you should be able to reach a 211 call center if you've got service. Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, so I know we have 10 counties that you're covering 
um, that we're a partner in. So how do you get funding for that? Well, most of our funding comes from United Way partner organizations. For example, you know, Oshkosh Area United Way, Manitowoc, Fond du Lac, New London and Ripon are all providing support for United Way, okay. as, as well as the Fox Cities United Way. So um, that's our basic support. There's also some funding that comes through the federal government depending on um, emer the emergency funding that's available to states. Um, unfortunately, currently that funding is not available this year, so the, f the full amount of support currently is being provided by United Way organizations. But you would welcome support from absolutely. others. Absolutely, absolutely. if they wanted more information about how they could support 211 and maybe at what level, <coughs> you could let them know that? Absolutely, and we would want them to link up with our <coughs> United Way Wisconsin partners, the 211 Wisconsin, as we are now a statewide system, mm -hmm. so that funding um, does help cover some of those infrastructure costs at the state level as well. Okay, so another question that we, um, we wanted to get to was um, as far as um, you mentioned the fact that you have culturally competent, when, when you're certified as a 2 on one um, provider, mm -hmm. as a, as a uh, specialist, what does that mean? Well, it's actually, it's, it's quite a lot of, um, it's a lot of studying and it's an exam that we take. But we also, what we also do throughout that process is make sure that the, the information referral specialists understand how to transfer calls, how to work with the translators, um, and things that really help that caller make it a seamless, uh, you know, a seamless transition when we need to use um, any kind of translating service. One of the things I love is the warm handoff. You don't make the person call again. That's correct. You connect them and you call that a warm handoff because how, why is it a warm handoff? Well, a warm handoff means that we're actually making sure that the caller is connected to another human being on the other end of the line. Okay, so if you, got a, if you got a, an answering machine or you got voicemail, you we would go back to the caller and, and let them know that that was the case and see what their, what their preference would be. Would they like to leave a message or would they like to try calling later? So when somebody calls your office, you know, calls 211, um, how often is the question that they initially ask you the real need that they have? Well, you know, it's, it's very interesting. Since I've been doing this, I, I, I and thought how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this almost three years. It'll okay. be three years in July. Um, I felt like that would probably be the case, but in, as in always, when, once you start to peel back layers and you start talking to people and let them tell their story, um, you really find that there are many needs. What we try to do is to get that caller to the most appropriate resource as quickly as possible. Okay, so why would somebody want to tell their story? I mean, isn't that kind of bearing a lot? And they do tell their story, and really for, for us, that's the, the crux of the call, is to allow that caller time to let us know what's going on. It's our job then to sift through that information and figure out where we need to start with the caller. But what I would feel like I might be judged. Not at all. We are totally confidential. We don't collect personal information unless it, it is needed to help the caller. Okay. So we're going to go to a break in just a few seconds, but before we do that, can you talk about the 2 on one plus site? Sure. Plus sites are um, sites across our 10 counties mm -hmm. that provide uh, a computer and a phone and some instruction on how to contact us. You know, initially when 211 was established, of course, not everybody had the equipment, and still to this day, they don't have the equipment to contact 211. Okay. So they're usually public places, libraries, um, some of our local resources, our bigger resource agencies have a plus site right in their organization. I think in Oshkosh we have one at the community pantry. Community pantry, okay. yes, that's exactly right. And of course people can always come into United Way and we'll help make that call with them absolutely, as well. Absolutely, right. absolutely. So we're going to run to break right now. and. Um, but please stay tuned because um, Lisa has more stories to tell us and a little bit more information about how, what kinds of things you might be interested in learning about 211. So stay tuned. It's not a charity, it's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. 
It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles, old smiles and new smiles. It's about us, all of us, our community living united because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us? Hi, welcome back to our program. My guest today is Lisa Smith. Lisa is the manager of two, United Way 2 on 1 and she's a certified 2 on 1 specialist. Um, earlier we were talking about what 2 on 1 was, but in case you missed that, uh, Lisa's going to give us a brief overview of what 2 on 1 is and how you can access it. And then we're going to get into some data that we've learned as a result of 2 on 1. So welcome back. Thank you. 2 on 1 is a dialing code. So to reach any 2 on 1 across Wisconsin, you just dial 2 on 1 on your cell or your home phone. Three d numbers, three easy. digits, easy okay. to remember. Um, and what you're going to get is you're going to talk to a human being who can help you kind of go figure out what types of services are going to most appropriately meet your needs. Because it can be confusing. There's so many. Um, agencies and, and, and so programs. many things and programs. So we try to put together a roadmap for our callers and empower them to make those decisions. Um, what we don't do is case management, things like that. Those are left to the professionals in our community. Before we go on though, you do tell a, a story. You've told me a story about um, a, some regular callers. Absolutely. We have a lovely caller in Oshkosh who um, basically just needs, us some, needs some help to, to find phone numbers. She has some vision issues, and so 211 is always there for her to help her just find a phone number for a local uh, government agency. Sometimes it's a business that she needs help with, mm -hmm. but those are cases where we know that, that per that's what that person needs at that moment in time. They may not need a bunch of uh, referrals to agencies. Mm -hmm. They just need to find the phone number to Social Security or wherever. Well, so. how, many, how many entries are in the database? You know, earlier we talked about agencies are responsible for putting those entries in, That's but I correct. know that you guys do some research and if something's not in there, you'll go find it. We'll try to find it, absolutely. Um, we do have a referrals, a certified resource specialist who works on curating that database and ensuring that those records are updated um, with specific information. So she reaches out to agencies, agencies reach out to us, and the most important thing is to keep that information with us updated. Mm -hmm. So um, anything that's you know that's new coming up for people in the community, we need to know about that. Right. Well, speaking of that that data, then um, we do have some information. Uh, what I what from a pr service provider's perspective, what I like about two on one is it can um, identify quickly for us the top needs and issues facing people in our community. And um, this slide is pretty much going to share, uh, show you that. So Lisa, if you'd be willing to just walk us sure. through this slide. And we'll just briefly go over. This is a, actually the, the 10 county service delivery area, the first slide. And, and I need to let you know that people might be listening to this on the radio. So they're not going to see this. Okay. So we need to sure. visually Absolutely. explain this. So this so is a pie chart, everybody. The pie chart that we're showing is the 10 counties and all of the problem needs um, that we have recorded in our data. And so it goes from the very top problem need, which is housing and shelter across all 10 counties, to the, um, to the very lowest, which was child care and parenting issues. Quickly, I want to mention most of our, our, our partner agencies, including Aging and Disability Resource Center, Child Care Resource and Referrals, are specialized information referral programs. We warm transfer calls to those agencies, and we don't handle those types of questions. Okay. Um. So then this is just, that was all, all, um, all 10 counties, all 10 and counties. we were about 11,000 some calls. Correct. And now this is just Winnebago County. So Winnebago County, again, mirrors the housing shelter, a huge problem in every community. We're up 53% this year overall in the 10 counties for people looking for housing shelter, mm -hmm. help with rent, that type of thing. Um, you're also, you're, being, you're utilizing the service in Winnebago County to get agency contact information, to connect with government agencies, to get just basic information. Um, one thing I will point out, utilities are up here in, in Winnebago County, but the mental health calls have gone down this year, and that's a little different from our 10 county data. Okay. So it could be good news where we're connecting people with more resources for some of those um, mental health needs and AODA. We work very closely with the Drug and Alcohol Coalition. 
um, and we work closely with your public health department mm -hmm. to try to make sure that we're getting appropriate referrals to those mental for those mental health calls. Okay, um, utilities, do you think you're going to see a spike in April? Probably, but last year the spike actually came in the fall. We, we were expecting more in April. Because they didn't do shut -offs. It came It came in the fall and that we were very, very busy with people who had already been shut off, um, who had already had, you know, their utilities disconnected, which if that's an issue for people, please call us before you have, an, you have the, the shut off. There are agencies in this community that will help you with right. that utility bill. And the other tip is pay something. Absolutely. If you can pay just a little and make arrangements with right. your utility, that's great. Because they're usually very good to work yes, with. Yes, absolutely. Well, over down here in the corner, we have this thing called 2 on 1 Counts. And Lisa, what is that? Well, 2 on 1 Counts is actually one of those great services that um, has really provided and helped by... Okay, wait, um, i got to get there, Lisa. United Way Worldwide is, has been okay. involved in this. Still not up there. Keep talking. Keep talking. So um, United Way Worldwide is working with a university to provide this real-time data to all communities who are participating, and Wisconsin is. So Wisconsin, as a participant in 2-on-1 Counts, really the data that we take in every day, those phone calls that come, um, are being fed into the system in real time. There is about a six- to seven-hour delay into what you're going to see. And just click on Wisconsin. Okay, well, I'm, we're not even, I don't yeah, think it's go. showing, but we're going to see in just a second. Okay. Yes, it worked. There okay. we go. So all of Wisconsin, as you can see, it's populating with data. So if we want to go ahead and click into the Oshkosh School District to see what's happening right here in Oshkosh over up in the very, very top. There we go. And then we're just going to scroll down. Oh, we this scroll will down find hours. data for you based on school district, legislative districts, zip codes, county, um, and region. So it's very, very um, user friendly. There's many ways to slice and dice the two on one data. It's great for agencies to use as grant writing or in any kind of community planning. And again, this is real time. This isn't, you're not waiting for a quarterly report. You're not waiting for something, some big study to be done. So yesterday, those calls were fed in. Okay. And so we're looking at data now for the last 365 days, but you can also oh. slice and dice that. Um, but as we're looking in Oshkosh School District, again, that housing and shelter is huge. Rent assistance is the number one issue going on in Oshkosh School District. And looking for low income or low cost housing. Absolutely. And then also shelters. And then shelters, yes. Our shelter calls, I mean, we get calls from people living in the Oshkosh parks uh -huh. and we need to help, you know, connect them to your local shelters. You have amazing resources here, but sometimes people just cannot find them. That's where 211 comes in. Um, and we, we work so closely with all of the agencies in our database uh, because they're the experts. We're just trying to get folks to them. What I also like is when you um, focus on the school district as a whole, it will tell you up, up in this corner um, that 17% of people in the school district are living in poverty. Yes, that is overlaid with census data. Right. And that, again, is all done at the, the national level um, through this partnership with United Way Worldwide and a, a local university there. And then the other piece was, um, and that it, it tells the state comparison, the That's 13%. Correct. Mm -hmm. It also t gives us the unemployment rate. This is kind of tiny on your screens, but um, it'll tell you the number of 11.2% um, of people um, have less than a high school diploma. Correct. And 38.9% um, of people are living in rental housing that's as opposed correct. to owner. Now, again, that's census data not necessarily coming out of the 201 calls. Right. But, again, people can look at this and utilize this for whatever works for you in your community. But it, those real-time calls are coming in and being reflected in that very top chart. And then the other thing that is really cool is if I go by zip code, um, we can actually look at levels of poverty within the city. That's correct. You can you can go five for 901, two, three, or four, um, and look at that individually, or any zip code in the state of Wisconsin can be, um, can be brought up and you can look at that data. So I'm just going to show quick, if you go over here to five for 901, the poverty rate is 26%. If you go in five for 904, the rate is 6% down 20%, and if you go on 5 for 902, it's 11.2%. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> so within the city, we have that much disparity. Absolutely, and okay. we see that in the larger cities across our service delivery area. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to mention about this is, again, um, it's real time, it's coming in, and it gives you a little more information as you click on each category as to those subcategories. So, okay. um, again, it's a, it's a great uh, data source for folks who are looking at community planning. The more people who call 211, the better this data sample becomes. So please, that's the number one thing, is if you can, 
you know, if you, if you have a question or you need some information, just pick up that phone and dial 211. And as those calls come in, they're going to be reflected in the 211 counts. Okay, data. Sounds, sounds good. So um, then finally, um, we talked about partners, and I want to get back to the partners a little bit um, and make sure that we know who those partners are. So if you want to mention th who the partners are that you're working well, with. Well, our partners, our biggest partners are definitely the county crisis departments because we haven't talked about disaster response, but that's a huge piece of 211 and why it was established. Um, so county crisis, emergency management, public health, um, all of the agencies in our database, certainly. Um, and um, the ADRCs, your, your specialized information referral programs, we don't duplicate that information. We really want to get callers to those programs for that special information. And as you said, you would do the warm handoff like if Absolutely. somebody's looking for child if care. If that's possible, if yes. If possible, yes. right. Or if they're looking for services for people who are disabled or elderly. That's correct. Okay. Absolutely. So then looking ahead, um, what are you seeing? Well, looking ahead, we have some initiatives statewide that we're doing. We are doing some work around the human trafficking um, issues, human trafficking mean, meaning tra sex trafficking and labor trafficking. So mm -hmm. we do some types of screenings um, for callers that come in statewide um, and connect those callers to those local resources again. Um, we are certainly um, a partner in the hub here in Oshkosh and, and see our role as may maybe being that entry point to the hub and getting those folks because certainly that's the goal of the hub is mm -hmm. to get them so that they, we don't need to be doing calls every day to 211 for certain basic needs information. And so for those of us, for those people that are listening today, if you don't understand what the hub is, the hub is basically um, a group of agencies that are coming together to provide case management and coaching to individuals who want to get to a higher level yeah. of self-sufficiency. And so um, you could call 211 and ask how you can get connected to Absolutely. the hub. Um, or you can reach out to our United Way as well. But 211 is the quickest way because that's an easy number to remember. Absolutely. Um, so, and then you also work with a new mental health connection. Yes, we are a partner in new mental health, my connection, new.org site. We do um, power that with our 211 data. Um, so that data is updated every year. We just submitted our updates to, to my connection new. And we also take calls if people can't find what they need on my connection new call 211. Okay. And um, before we get off, I want you to tell us, tell us a story. Okay, Tell well, I have a great story. story. Okay. Um, I received a call one day from a woman who was, um, was disabled and was unable to find shelter in the community, and it happened to be during the time of your EAA convention. And so I was able, it was a Friday, I was able to call somebody, an agency here in Oshkosh, and talk to somebody. And that person, um, and I won't mention the agency, but that person was able to intervene and help this poor woman find something during a very difficult time to find shelter in Oshkosh. And those are the things that make us feel so good at 2 and one those, those partnerships with local agencies, those folks working on behalf of that client were able to find um, her some shelter. So, so then um, how did you know whether or not she really was helped? We did a follow-up with her. Okay. So about a week later, I was able to contact her, which we do about 7% of our calls to just make sure they're getting help. Okay. So um, we, we kind of missed the piece on standardization and assurance of that the calls That's are okay. being done well, because but we're running out of time. So Lisa, if people want more information about 211, what can they do? They can either call 211. Um, or they can call me directly. Um, I, I have a direct line at um, United Way, and that is 920-954-7206. I do have an email address, um, but again, I think calling for me is always the easiest, so we can talk that through, and if you need more information, we can certainly get it out to you. And if you're computer savvy and you want to go on the website, you can actually root around on the website Absolutely. and find all kinds of information at 211now.org, and that would be another way to do that as well. Absolutely. It's a great thing for agencies who maybe don't have the time to call us to look at the database online. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. This is great so much. news. Great information. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for watching our program.